Okay, one, two, three, action. Okay, what is up guys? Fahad here with Za once again. And today we have Sky here. How are you Sky? Hey man. Hey Thank man. you so much for coming. And actually, I got to know him from Brother East. He actually yep. reviewed his bike earlier, but I think he reviewed it from the driving license perspective. Lah. Mm -hmm. and today we're gonna review it as a bike perspective. Lah. Yes. And what I have to say is, uh, why you buta? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, Farhan, I took this professional advice on how to be a badass in just two easy steps. Shape your head and grow a good tea. So that's what I did. I shape my head and I grow a good tea and I transform myself from an ass to a badass overnight. <laughs> nice. <laughs> back, back to the bike. Uh, this bike, um, wow, I tell you what, I've been wanting ever since it started this uh, bike reviews. We've always wanted to review this bike for quite some time. Mm -hmm. yes. Finally, we have Sky over here, wow, who is so lucky enough to actually let us review a very mint uh, Kawasaki KR. Mm -hmm. You know, this one legendary, you know, bro. Yeah. I, During our time, huh? Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, Back in younger day, when this was introduced, I tell you, wow, everybody was like going for this. Even my uncle wrote this once, you know. And I have to say, its reliability is awesome. I mean, mm. to stand a test of time, uh, and yet still have a cult following, mm. is an awesome bike. Uh. Yeah, in Malaysia, it's very popular. Mm -hmm. And I think Thailand also. Uh. Mm. Thailand, uh, yes. Thailand also, oh my gosh. Thailand. Yeah, so before Brother Sky tell us a story about uh, his Kawasaki Ninja KR, I'm gonna give you a bit of background about it. Uh. Officially designated as the Kawasaki KRR ZX150 Ninja in the Singaporean market, the Kawasaki KR, as is commonly known, was a popular class 2B sports bike during the early 2010s, together with the Honda NSR150 SP and Yamaha TZM. In recent years, together with its other two stroke rivals, it has gained a legendary status with a cult following among Singapore, Malaysian, and Thailand riders. Engine is a 148cc liquid cool two stroke single cylinder Cancri Street valve with a carburetor fuel system and a 6-speed manual transmission. In Singapore, the Kawasaki KR is a remnant of a bygone era due to strict vehicle control and emission laws. The KR continues to be produced in Indonesia and is still a popular bike in Malaysia and Thailand. Alright guys, so shout out to our sponsor, Liquid Moly. Do check out their online store for awesome motorbike care related products. Support us by clicking on the link below to view the range of products. Or use our promo code upon checking out. Okay, Sky, uh, well, I don't know what, I have a lot of questions, but I don't know what to say actually. <laughs> now that you are here, I don't know. <laughs> See how much he love his bikes, guys. So anyway, Sky, why you still decide to keep this bike? And uh, when you first started? Okay, so actually my, my first bike is a Yamaha RXK. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I rode it for one year, so mm -hmm. I had to, I rebuilt the bike. Then after that, I passed it to my brother. He saw it off, then I took over his KR. Ah. So in total, actually, I have three. So this is my brother's, I share with him. Then I have my own one which is used for racing. Mm -hmm. Currently used for racing. I have another one, it's spare, but it's not registered. So if I need to if I want to use it for a race, uh -huh. I have to tow the bike anywhere I found. Oh, okay. So this is uh, this is registered in 2004. Mm -hmm. My my own one is registered in 2007. So this is 2024. The other one will be 2027. Awesome yeah. man. Another Three more years, this one is like 20 years old. Yeah, but still, still can renew. Still it looks good, you know? Yep. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that uh, you have three, yeah? Yeah. Uh, why you choose to bring this one instead? <laughs> oh, because currently the, the my own personal one is it's still in the shop. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's currently still in the race uh, settings. Ah, race settings. I so I have to, if I want to bring it on the road, I have to transfer oh. my stuff to the other KR, then to go for reinspection, ah. uh, road tax, yes, and uh, get my insurance yes, yes. again. So, that racing KR, do you do any modification to the engine? Uh, of course, yeah, <laughs> for, for race purpose only. <laughs> ah. that, that bike cannot be on the road. The, okay, those the unregistered one, the non registered one, yeah, cannot be used on the road. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. La. So, where do you race actually? Uh, in Singapore, only KF1, Crunchy KF1. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, I'm sure previous years you went to overseas, right? Uh, not serious, but I played in Tangkak once, uh, mm, twice actually. See, see. Yeah. Okay. So once with the KR, uh, the other one was with a Mini GP. In your own words, how would you describe uh, the KR's performance and its handling? In terms of handling, I think compared to the 2Bs for sport bikes mm -hmm. among the two strokes, namely the SP, TZM, mm -hmm. uh, the KR, 
Then we have the RS125, we have the Kagiva Mito. For the sport bikes, I think the best handling is always still the SP because of its single swing arm actually. Oh, okay. But in terms of weight, mm. I think KR is the lightest. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the versatility for this bike, the flickering during corners, in my opinion, this is the best. Mm. So I prefer this, it's not as bulky as the TZM, mm -hmm. it's not as heavy as the SP, so it's like in between. Oh. Uh, yeah. And its power to weight ratio is... It's, it's actually quite good. It's almost balanced 50 50. Yes, ah. correct. I, I ever wrote this once before. Okay, you know? then how do you think? When, when in my younger days, I, uh. I borrowed my friend's uh, bike. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. la, and, uh, yeah, yeah, back, back yeah. in my those, younger days. Those were the days. La, uh. When, uh, ah, yeah. Now, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, everything is on, all on social media, so, ah, so you know, don't do, don't do uh, it. It's a long time story, so ah. you can see on camera. Last time, still 3310, ah. you know. Legend, ah. <laughs> 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 so, so, anyway, I did wrote once, and it, I tell you, it's pickup is awesome. I was like, whoa! <laughs> That time back then, yeah, I just passed. In uh, SSDC, we were riding like CG125. Yeah. So when I get a hold of this one, I was like, whoa! Awesome! <laughs> man. I was so, like, <laughs> so that basically, that moment basically made you fell in love with Two Stroke. <laughs> uh. Two Stroke, yeah, yeah, definitely. And the interesting story of that, you know, I actually do not know that there is a fuel tap, you know. Yeah, I was like, kicking, hey, why cannot start? Why cannot start? Why cannot start? <laughs> then my friend come, oh, you haven't opened the. Uh, Fuel tap, oh. so you open them, uh, and then can start. This this bike is how uh, old? Twenty years old. Right? Um, no, it's roughly I don't know, twenty fourteen. Uh, it was yeah. ten years old already, so it's almost almost twenty. Yeah, uh, I guess. 20, yeah. Eighteen. Eh, sorry. Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, seventeen uh, so, years old. So being a seventeen to twenty years old bike, uh, uh, there's so much technology on it, mm. and then it's somewhat it's a two stroke. Uh. Yes. So, <laughs> so there's no there's no rider aid, there's no ABS uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pure mechanical. So that's no. one fun. That's one that's one thing to make it fun. That's uh, why it makes it fun. I see. Yeah. So the, I mean, the result always says this to me like, Two stroke is fun. Two stroke is Definitely. fun. If you have a chance to ride a two stroke bike, I tell you, alama, the the pickup is awesome. The handling, you know, most of the two stroke bike are like that. You know, we understand that two strokes uses two T. For you, do you put inside the fuel tank or is there a separate pump? Ah, okay. Uh, so uh, all my KRs which I have, which, mm -hmm. I, which I have, right? It's uh, all premix, meaning mm -hmm. it, I pour directly into the tank. Mm -hmm. I don't use the two T pump or the auto injector. I mm -hmm. don't use it. Reason being because when I had my RX gate at one time, I was running at the expressway and halfway my 2T pump failed. So it didn't supply the 2T. Then so my I seized my piston. Oh my so from there I learned the lesson to remove my 2T pump. Should we just remix? So for yeah. the past 10 years I've been running KRs, although I pre my bike. Is there any specific uh, amount. amount that you do uh, you use or you, you just Okay, you feel like ah, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, in terms shape, of ratio, uh -huh. uh, actually, there's a specific mm -hmm. way to say the ratio. Mm -hmm. But in our bike community in Singapore, mm -hmm. or I think Malaysia as well, how they calculate the ratio is that from one liter of petrol, mm -hmm. you utilize or use about twenty milliliters of two T. That's the basic rule of thumb. But yeah. if let's say you are riding high RPMs, instead of twenty milliliter, it will be twenty five mLs or twenty five milliliters. Mm -hmm. It also depends on the two T you use. Is it semi synthetic? Is it a full synthetic? Is it a caster based oil? Mm -hmm. So the thicker it is, the lesser you can use. Yes. And the same thing, you have to know your bike. Uh, does it have a cooling system like a radiator cooling mm -hmm. system? Or is it running on air cool? It's a choice mm -hmm. to try it air cool or air cool. Ah, no, no, no. It, that's, um, it's, that's how it's made. Depend, depends yeah. on the bike. Like RXK, RXK is all air cool. Mm. KR, SP, TZM, RS125 is all uh, water cool. You know, I remember. I still remember uh, during my theory mm. Mm. lessons in SSDC back then, uh, the instructor actually taught us the amount of 2T to put mm. in. You know, mm. He says every time you pump, you just put in uh, three, two or three caps of 2T inside. Ah, okay, okay. That one is because he's uh, giving a precaution. Mm, yeah, precaution. yeah, just in case your 2T pump fails, right, you have at least some yeah. 2T in your tank. Yeah, that, that's, that's what my mechanic also said. You know, my Vespa last time, he has a separate 2T pump, but mm -hmm. then uh, he insists that we premix inside. So in case uh, this one goes empty, you know, there's still 2T inside the fuel tank, you know. Yep. Uh, so mm -hmm. that yep to keep it lubricated yep. and then uh, he also said uh, he he roughly said about uh, 5 liters to 200 ml of uh, 2T so roughly I make my own calculation there should be about 2 bottles of uh, Yakult uh, every time I fill up full tank I use uh, 2 bottles of Yakult 
in point side. Okay, that's a nice mm. uh, tip. Mm -hmm. I think nowadays, uh, most riders wouldn't know how many, myself included, uh, wouldn't know how many to ease to pour <laughs> and they own a stroke bike. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that is really a bygone era. Like. Actually, besides 2T, you can also use 40, you know. Oh, really? Ah, yeah. serious? I also oh, use 40 see, inside. I, I, I just know that I say, go, jack and tang on. Anyhow, just pour inside. Even though it looks stock, uh, but you have made several modifications yep. to the yep. yes. uh, Such as, oh, your, your speedometer is. is a pillar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an old RS125 uh, speedometer. Ah, yeah. okay. yeah, that's so cool, yeah. man. Single speedometer, is it? Yes. And, yes. and I noticed, yeah, you actually, uh, when I came here, I was thought, like, eh, how come this KR got only single speed arm? <laughs> is it a new version or what? Just oh, yeah, okay. explain. Because, <laughs> like, like I mentioned earlier on, I like the handling of from the SP mm -hmm. because of this uh, single speed arm. Mm, At the correct. same time, uh, it's nice, it looks nice. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Ducatis with the single swing arm, it looks very sexy, very nice. Yes. Like the MV Agusta as well. NSR250, the PGM Force, they have the single swing arm as well. So it mm -hmm. looks very nice. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why not, if I have a friend who is riding SP, he's going to scrap, I buy off the swing arm from him, I refurbish it, I put it retrofit into the KR. So start the project uh, roughly <laughs> took about one month of planning where to cut, the bushing, uh -huh. how, what's the dimensions to cut, I mean, how many millimeters to cut, then. <laughs> <laughs> Execute the plan. Yeah. Freaking impressed. How much did you spend for this? I mean, the, the person who did it for me, because we're quite close, I'm a regular uh -huh. customer of his, so it's roughly mm. about 300 plus for his labor. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's actually quite Not cheap. Not too bad. Alright, so Sky basically has made uh, more than just the swing arm and uh, the meter. meter modifications. Uh. There's also other modifications meant for the track, but uh, it's still real, real legal, uh, basically. For example, the radiators. It's running on uh, aluminum radiators, bigger than standard ones, mm. so it has more cooling uh, efficiency, better cooling efficiency. Mm. If you look uh, inside, look at the gold, uh, the gold head. That's mm. a cylinder head. That's a CNC. Uh, it's a machine CNC head. Oh it's not God. like a casting. Original, yeah, I mean. original box are casted. Yeah. Mm. Then inside the covering here, mm -hmm. it's a carburetor, but you cannot be seen because. Uh, I'm running a, a big computer, size 36mm, PWK quad van, yeah, mm -hmm. K-Hins. Then, uh, have I mentioned the brakes? These are Hell 19mm brake, uh, brake pumps, master cylinders, which I've used in the track as well. Other than the meter, I have this. So, these are the last modifications that I have. So these are foot preloads, mm. uh, increasing the hardness or softness before the compression and rebound in an action. What about this this YSS suspension? Yeah, huh? yeah. so this is this YSS uh, suspension is an aftermarket version because uh, stock standard is using Kayaba. So because I'm using this SP right, the weight is heavier. I need a stiffer suspension, so I have to use this YSS. Huh? Okay, so Sky, how's the riding posture on the KR for you? Is it comfortable? What's your height? Uh, my height is one six zero. Mm. So for me, KR is uh, not really race charging position like RS one two five. It's still comfortable if you are using a stock standard handlebars. Mm. Yeah, if you are using uh, race handlebars or TZM handlebars, you retrofit into the bike, it becomes mm. a charging position. You tend to bend more forward. Okay. So that is tiring. But for me, this is quite comfortable enough. Oh, see these handlebars, they are the clips are adjustable. That, this uh, no no, this is stock. Uh, oh, this is stock. Yeah, it's fixed. These are stock Oh, it's handlebar. fixed. I see, I see. But it looks, it looks. <laughs> no, no, this is stock. These are stocks. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the bike's condition in general. Uh, sure. It's very mid. I have to say this. Uh, usually, people I see KR is usually used and abused one. Yeah. <laughs> so rough. It's really like buruk lah. But they say buruk lah. And the thing that I hate most about them modifying their bikes is that they take out the lower flaring. Yes. I really hate that. No, what? What? what what's the point of it? <laughs> Sorry ah. Uh, I'm really not a fan of you guys taking out the flaring from the KR. Ah, it looks ugly. Yes. It looks ridiculous. Yes. And it looks... Um, <laughs> I don't know. Hideous. I want to say stupid, but Hideous. they want to too much really. Yeah. <laughs> How do you manage to upkeep this bike bro? Being a 17 year old bike. Uh? Okay, fortunately my brother, he used to in Aboy. Mm -hmm. So he's been there for like almost 20 plus years. So mm -hmm. I can get the spare parts easily. So mm -hmm. if anything happens to the bike, I can get very fast. Uh, other than him, I also have friends who bring in KR parts. I myself bring in KR parts as well. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for me to restore if anything happens to the bike. Lah. Yeah. Um. So you mentioned several times it's mostly project for yourself. Do you do yourself or able to shop and do? Uh, I think when it comes to the cylinder block, right, and the engine, I pass it to my race mechanic. Uh -huh. Anything the outlooks, 
I can do it myself. I see, I see. DIY? Yeah, yeah DIY. Can I step back? <laughs> so, um, let's talk about the engine. Uh. Sure. S f throughout your ownership of this bike, has this bike given any problems or is there any inherent problem to it? Okay. About so, to engine? the best of my knowledge, this bike has three owners prior from you know, before me. Mm -hmm. So, first, oh no, actually two. Before my brother, him, then myself. Mm -hmm. So, throughout the times this particular bike has changed hands, right? I think it only broke down twice. Mm -hmm. That is only because of the piston seizure. Usually, it's because of mechanical failure, mm -hmm. uh, lifespan, lifespan issue. This is when dead. When dead, right? yes, yes, correct. Twice. So, other than that, not much. So, for the past ten, almost twenty years, really, fifteen years. Have you heard of any other KR riders that uh, complain of any other problem besides uh, engine seizure? Of course, uh, I, I have my pressure as well, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not major to me, Like, mm -hmm. for example, bro uh, broken wheel valves. Mm -hmm. I would say the spoiled cone bearings, uh, leaking suspensions, front or rear suspensions, mm -hmm. uh, broken bearings, I mean spoiled bearings, wheel bearings, you know, brake failures, other than that, <laughs> electrical <laughs> issues. Uh, when, when, when it's getting old, a lot of problems will start yes. to come in. So that's yeah. where you need to start to restore the bike. That's why right. uh, a lot of people say, wow, KR motor sakit, motor sakit. But I don't believe that KR is a motor sakit. It's not, it's not. Because why? For it to last such a long time mm. with a, such a fan cult following, cult following you yes. know, it just proves that the engine is very reliable. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Kawasaki is known for heavy duty. So in Malaysia, there's a cult following also for mm -hmm. this bike. I mean, you can see it across the causeway already. <laughs> they use this bike for a lot of things, uh, for going to work, for mm. race. And then, <laughs> if you want uh, to know whether the KR uh, belongs to a Malaysian, uh, without looking at this plate, uh, you look oh. at the box. <laughs> <laughs> you see box, ah, uh, to Malaysia. Uh, right, right, right. They say, uh, they say don't, don't judge the book by its cover, man. Those, those KR with boxes are some of them really fast. Yeah, I've seen in my own eyes. I know, I know. But uh, generally, most of those uh, Malaysian riders, Malaysian owners, be it KR, SP, mm -hmm. or any other of the sports bike, right? They have a box, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you mentioned you play track with this bike. Uh. Mm -hmm. How does she handle on the track? I, I reckon that she can go above 200. No, <laughs> uh, the, 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 the track. The yeah, track. Well, no, I, I mean, I see a uh, full very no, fast. That one is drag racing. Drag uh, racing is different. Okay. Yeah, because Sorry, in uh, tracks, you have, you have uh, turns, right? Yeah, yeah, so you yeah, won't, yeah. I mean, even though if this bike were to reach Sepang, I don't think it will reach like 210, 220. I've seen GPS uh, speedometers for KR reaching 200, yes. But it's not in the track, it's on mm. highway, like, that's in Malaysia. If you're asking about the, the character of the bike in the track, not this one, um, for my own, it's quite agile. Mm -hmm. To flick from one side to the other side is very fast. It's very light because two stroke bikes are, are meant to be light actually. So mm -hmm. it's, the handling is quite fast. So what's the so Snitchy. Dry weight is less than 130 actually. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Very light. Less. <laughs> yeah, quite light. The bike is quite light. When you're negotiating a corner or you want to mm. suddenly lean into the corners, mm -hmm. you can do it easily. Yes. You yes. need for this uh, KR is TikTok. Uh. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Sky, just now you did mention something about a reed valve. Yeah. Okay, uh, in this bike, uh, what is? Can you roughly, briefly explain what a reef valve would do and how to know when it's time to be replaced? Okay, so put it into perspective. Uh, in four-stroke bikes, you have your intake and out uh, output valves, right? The mm -hmm. intake valves and your exhaust valves. So a reed valve works somewhat similar. It's a one-way check valve where from the carburetor. It goes inside, goes out. So the moment the reed valve opens, that's where the mixture of fuel and air goes into your crankcase and mm, up into the cylinder. So that is that is the purpose of the reed valve. Control, control the flow the of flow. Uh, mixture into the crankcase. Okay. So, so no, yeah, I mean, if you put into the concept, it's something. Like, yeah. uh, but FI, you control by ECU. ECU um, reed valves ECU are mechanical. mechanical. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, depending on the, the the vacuum being done by the mm -hmm. downstroke of the piston. Just like you know, the your hose, you just close it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, open I, I, way I close. Think we need to start a section whereby <laughs> Sky explains all the technical. technical. <laughs> this is so technical for me. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, so for maintenance wise mm -hmm. of the red buff, right? Mm -hmm. um, the symptoms are hard to start, or when you are high, riding in high rev, it, it doesn't rev out. It starts mm -hmm. to bog. So you have to check your red valve petal, or we call it red petals. So we need to see whether there's cracking whether it broke at the tip or just simply just free and just shatter. So the tip will go into your crankcase and can become an issue. How much is the replacement of that? Okay, um, 
because for my race bike, okay, let's say for my race bike, I'm using the V-Force. Mm -hmm. So there's V-Force 3, V-Force 4, we are using carbon fiber reed pedal. So one, I mean, there's four pieces, that's roughly about 100 sing. Mm. If you are using the standard stock reed pedals, I can get it roughly about 30, 40. I see. I can get the whole assembly, the reed petals mm -hmm. and the reed block itself, the whole assembly, about mm -hmm. 70 plus. Ah, yeah. So right. let's talk about the maintenance for <coughs> ER, giving, given that it's a very old bike and I know they have three, maybe you will take once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how your maintenance schedule is like, mm -hmm. but is it heavy on the maintenance since it's nope. an old bike? No, it's not. Okay, what make it, you have to understand that the more modifications you do, the more maintenance you have to, to do. La. Understand. So um, if your bike is stock standard, for example, a KR is stock standard, and in the perspective, actually a two-stroke, engine it's not the same as a four stroke engine in terms of engine oil change intervals mm -hmm. now engine oil in the two stroke engine can last three months no issue because why our piston is not running on engine oil our pistons are running on 2t yes. it's not like a four stroke mm -hmm. system where it requires a wet sum and then it uses the engine oil from the wet sum up into the cylinder it's mm -hmm. not the same so our engine oil can last three months if we want to but it's best for me every month i change my engine oil I change my spark plug as well. I clean my carburetor as well. Mm. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> uh, this doesn't matter your mileage, lah. Doesn't matter. Constantly. Yes. All right. So um, let's talk about the fuel consumption. Hmm. Um, how big is the fuel tank, and how far can you travel with it? On I say, uh, to the best of my knowledge, eleven liters for the tank. Uh -huh. Ten plus to eleven liters, mm -hmm. and then uh, because this is a modded bike, right? So one liter, roughly about twelve to thirteen clicks only. So actually, a stock standard KR can last about 20 to 25 clicks depending on your riding patterns as well just now you spoke about your modifications about yes. that, and then i also spoke about the parts uh, uh, is it rare to find no no it's still it's still it's easy still. to find we still have kawasaki agent in singapore parts are still being produced in indonesia now mm -hmm. it's all shifted to indonesia previously it's thailand main production previously was thailand because for example this particular model okay we call it krr mm -hmm. but actually in singapore context is zx 150 mm -hmm. so this model is from the thailand side indonesia they mm -hmm. call it ninja rr that is ah. the uh, indonesia market yeah I so it's different so the block serial numbers are different for example indonesia ninja RR is using the 1855 mm -hmm. zx 150 is using the 1878 ah. so this 1878 this box are all produced still in thailand but other parts you know like brake system, uh, brake lever, cover set is all produced in Indonesia now. So in Thailand, Indonesia, this bike is still in production. So there's still a bit pep, spare parts spare available. Parts, yeah. So not, not too bad. It's lah. compatible with the previous generation of bikes. Mm. 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 That's good. That's, so that's something uh, assuring. Did, uh, that's something assuring for this bike. You know, because I know that some to be new riders they might want to get this, so this video might come in handy, you know, <laughs> okay, for their uh, reference. Just to, just to, for the record, la, mm -hmm. actually the last KR model or the ZX Ninja model or ZX model, I think was produced in 2012 or 20, between 2012 to 2015, that's the last piece oh. out in Indonesia. And Singapore doesn't bring in because of, you know, Euro standards. Yeah, yeah they don't bring Screw in. Screw them. Yeah. <laughs> so this is under the NDA? Hmm. Uh, no, mine, mine is not because it's, it's registered after 2003. Yeah, yeah, so see. both my bikes still can be used on the road. Okay, this one I always see, uh, KIPS. Uh, but this is KIPS, just the technology okay. that's being used in the bike. What yes, does it actually mean? So you see, Kawasaki... Uh, Oh, integrated power yeah, system. Integrated power <laughs> power. <laughs> that, is the, that is the up the read valve lah. No, no, that's yeah. the power valve. That's the power valve. Yeah. Mm. So after a certain RPM, right, it will open up to allow more flow oh. up into the exhaust. Like, yeah. like the VTEC lah. Eh? Yeah, something like VTEC <laughs> as well. Like like RS one two five power valve, SP uh, H, uh, HRC valve. I think or yeah, I think they call mm. it not RC valve. Then uh, TZM's YPVS. It's ah, I see. Same I see, concept. I see. Okay, okay. So do you guys on general or not on the road? Do you get dirty looks, you know, regard because of your right, what, because of your right? Uh, I think to answer that question, uh, because if you look at my bike, right, mm -hmm. if you look at my tyres, the typical riders nowadays for KR is using thin tyres. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's either uh, spoke rims or, or just they use, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 or they use the uh, rims from 125Z uh, or Spark or what's, I mean not Spark, I mean uh, Y15 They retrofit into their bike uh -huh. and then they use very thin tyres mm -hmm. Then like what you said just now, some of them they don't put the fairing That's the stereotype given uh, So they, then the, you know, their, their outfit 
how they how they bring the bike, you know, that, like you say, the exhaust system is mm-hmm. very noisy and such. Mm-hmm. That thing looks like given more to that kind of modifications. Uh. I see. For mine, I think I never received any dirty look about it. People mm-hmm. say my bike is noisy. That one to me, it's. Yeah, no, it's not it's a two stroke. <laughs> two stroke no, but if, if you leave your muffler stock, uh, mm-hmm. it won't be as loud. And this muffler is stock, huh? Uh, it's, stock, <laughs> it's running on stock muffler actually. Yeah, yeah exhaust st- muffler mm-hmm. or stock. So on the road, given that these bikes uh, cop status amongst the rough, biker mm. community, yeah. Mm. Uh, especially with those in uh, the early to- 2000s, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you get a lot of looks and thumbs up on the road with this. Oh, recently, actually, when I was uh, riding with my girlfriend, right, this bus driver came up to me and said, "Bro, your bike very nice, ah." Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I say, "No, no, it's not just simple bike only, lah." I tell him like that, you know. But he say, "Yeah, he just say the bike very nice, lah. Mm-hmm. He likes the bike. I think the guy is uh, a rider. He used to be a rider as well. Yeah, yeah. because yes, and, we uh, are riders. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so going forward with your three. KRs, ah. mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, what yep. you plan to do with them? Extend so long I have the money to do so. Mm. Uh, we will try to keep it as much as I as long as I can. Yeah, because I don't want the, the two stroke scene to die in Singapore. Yes, please, yeah. please. If you are still <laughs> if you viewers out there, if you still have a two stroke, you don't just keep it, you no know, maintain. Two strokes are best. Ah. I yeah, love yeah. two strokes. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> Other than that, <laughs> that uh, I mean, there's still we still have the KTM 300s or mm-hmm. the 200s, the TPI version. Uh-huh. Those are the latest two strokes in Singapore. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But it's a scrambler. So if you want to ride it like a road bike, you have to change to a super motard setting. The, you know, you are you are so knowledgeable about this bike. You know, there's so much you uh, want to. So much. Like, it, 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 took, it took it took time. Like it took mm-hmm. time. Like ten ten almost ten years of riding to for me to know in and out of the bike. Uh-huh. Actually, not really in and out because in in terms of the engine itself, I still learning. I'm still learning about it. Mm. Yeah. He does it. Himself, guys. Certain things he does it himself with this bike. I mean, uh, for me, I don't dare to touch my bike, but I'm really impressed by people, people. who dare to mess around with their bikes. You know. Thank you so much, Sky, for coming out to do this review. With us. Problem, I mean, uh, this bike is really legendary, lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it reminded you guys of uh, your class to B days. You know, <laughs> especially those riders who got their license in 1999 or 2000s. Mm-hmm. Uh, this bike is usually most of them is their first bike, lah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean. Uh, we are very thankful. We have been wanting to have this uh, bike uh, the on the show, but because you know most of the riders are shy, so mm. you know. Yeah, I was shy too, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay lah. I mean, uh, we you have the knowledge. You have a uh, awesome looking bike. No, it just mm, yeah, it's it, a plus point. Uh. It needs to be. Immortalized, immortalized on video. Okay. Uh, don't let the two stroke scene die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let the two stroke scene die. So. <laughs> Any riders want to review the bike? Ask. You can touch us on our social media pages below. Okay, our riders out there, if you have anything else to comment or any knowledge to share, just put in the comment section below because you know our more to be riders, n- newbie riders out there are actually looking into uh, this kind of bikes. You mm. know, so if you have any knowledge or experience, just put in the comment section below, share with them, and then uh, like and share this video with your riding khakis, and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to support us and our awesome sponsor, Lucky Moly. Uh, do check out their online store for a whole range of motorbike care products and uh, use our promo code. On the pond checking out. Panjang, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we will see you in the next one. <laughs>